So today we're going to do a Jeep Grand Cherokee Donna 35 axle overhaul from the Jeep Grand Cherokee 1993 to 1998 model. I'm going to be installing an Eaton True Track locker and Chrome Molly axle shafts. So the equipment we're going to be using is personally a printout of the factory service manual. A Dyna 35 original equipment's 3.73 ratio pinion gear and ring gear. I brought extra crush sleeves, they're only $2 each. Here is a spacer shim kit for both the pinion bearing and the carrier bearing. So this is a Timken bearing kit for overhauling the axle. The yoke I have in there is leaking oil due to a ring around the seal. So I'm replacing the yoke completely. I could have used a sleeve, but I decided to just buy an entire yoke, which is not that expensive. Here are my two chromoly axle shafts. The axle shafts come with this hardware. These are the axle bearings, and these are the seals, and these are the wheel studs. And finally, I have my Eaton locker. So this locker is the most highly thought of locker because it requires no external actuation. And about the only disadvantage I've heard is that when you've got one wheel all the way in the air, you can't have that wheel spinning. That's quite a rare situation and you can get around it by touching your brakes lightly. But in all other situations, it's actually the perfect locker. It's got every advantage of all the other lockage, lockers and none of the disadvantages of any of the lockers. So now I'm going to pressure wash uh, the axle, clean off all the crap. Well, I think that's good enough. So now I'm going to label the bearing caps with a left and right. So this is L and this is R. Now using a quarter inch wrench. And then you use a magnet to get this out. So here they are. So now we can push the axle in. And we can see the axle is pushed in and the C-clip is exposed. And then we just push the C-clip out. And we should be able to move, to move the actual shot. Okay, so now I'm going to use my trusty gasket scraper. Okay, so here we're going to make a giant wrench to hold the yoke while we adjust it.
Okay, so I have this little square, which I'm going to use to hit out the inside pinion bearing. So now I'm going to remove the axle seals. Okay, so I'm going to use this Harbor Freight uh, bearing puller to get the bearing out. But the problem is that this washer is too small. So like everything at Harbor, Harbor Freight, it's very cheap and it almost, almost works. <laughs> so I've made this little thing. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to put this in. Yeah, I guess it's very important to grease everything. Let's see if this actually works. So the next step is to install the bearing. Okay, so we want to press on this bearing and if you look there's a cage here which is slightly raised um, compared to the inner bearing race. We want to push on the inner bearing race and not on the cage because it could damage the cage. I think, I don't think you can push on this cage if you want to press this bearing in. So I'm a bit concerned about that. So what I've done is I've found a bushing from a transmission and it just fits in there over the shaft but inside the cage and onto the bearing rest. So that looks like an ideal way to push this in. Well, it's going in. Okay, so there you can see So I'm going to use the old, the old bearing race to hit in the new bearing race. So what I've done is um, I've taken this race and cut it. This is the old race, obviously. This will allow me to play around with the shims and get the right shim. 
without having to constantly hit the bearing out and in each time. Okay, so here are a few shims. Um, making kind of a guess. I'm putting fewer than I think they are because there is a shim um, in the old pinion and I'm um, judging that it's a little thicker than what I've got here. Here's my pinion with some Vaseline on there. Oh, and yes, of course, there's the crush sleeve. Okay, so what I'm doing now is um, I've ground the thread at the top so this can screw on easily. This is the old nut which obviously I'm going to throw away. This will enable me to do all my tests quite easily. tighten it now enough so that I can feel a little bit of resistance. So the thing is to do is just turn it a bit and then feel is there resistance and if there's a little bit of resistance it means that it's kind of seated. It's not quite tight enough um, for final installation but it's not moving and you can feel that everything is making contact. I'm going to have just the right size uh, thingamajig to press on the carrier bearings. So as you can see it makes contact with the inner bearing race but doesn't touch the catch. It seems thoroughly in there. According to folklore, and by that I mean YouTube, if you heat this up you should be able to fit it over the carrier. Now it's slightly smaller than a carrier, it's a press fit. Um, but it's a press fit that I'm a bit scared to do in case I damage the rings. In, in any case, heating it up and flipping, flipping it over looked so easy that I thought I'm going to just go for it. Now before I heat this up, I'm going to take this Japanese sand standing stone, which is super flat and I'm going to use this to just remove the high spots. So I'm putting on a bit of alcohol. Okay, so that's really flat now. I think I can heat this safely to boiling temperature.